Secondly, during depolarization, we find there are three vectors. But during repolarization, we are making only one vector. Why? The reason being, depolarization is a fast process, but repolarization is a slow process. Because sodium channels are fast channels, but potassium channels are not that fast. So again, listen. Depolarization occur fastly and repolarization occur gradually. Is that right? Now, when depolarization is going on, septal depolarization suddenly occur and complete. Then major ventricular depolarization come. And when major ventricular depolarization is completed, then basal ventricular depolarization come. So depolarizing vector for septum and major part and basal part are recognized by the needle independently. So three independent waves are made. Is that right? Am I clear? Again, let's come back to this diagram. That during the repolarization, septum is, sorry, during the depolarization, depolarization, septum is depolarized first, major part is depolarized, and lastly, basal. Because depolarization is a fast process, so first septal depolarization completes, then vector is produced for major ventricular depolarization, and very rapidly this vector is complete, and then basal vectors are produced. Is that right? So machine will sense septal vectors, major ventricular depolarization vector and basal vectors independent of each other. So it will draw three waves. Clear? But repolarization is a slow process. Now listen carefully. When septum is depolarizing, yet it has not, septum has not finished its, again, repolarization is a slow process. When septum has started its repolarization, it has not finished major ventricular repolarization start. And and it has not finished basal repolarization start. So because repolarization is a slow process, so three areas of ventricles, when they start the repolarization, repolarization, their repolarizing currents are overlapped in their time. They are, so when septal repolarization, major ventricular repolarization and basal repolarizing vectors, they are almost overlapping with each other, then the strongest vector will move the needle. And strongest vector is major ventricular repolarization. Is that right? Septal repolarization and basal repolarization is fused with it. Am I clear? So repolarizing current makes a single important vector which is moving rightward and upward, carrying negative current in its head. Am I clear? No problem? Now let's go back to this diagram. I have not drawn here repolarizing vector. With your permission, I draw here repolarization vector, but not in green color. I draw it in okay, black color. This is the repolarization vector, and of course, its head is electro negative. Is that right? Now ventricles are repolarizing. When ventricles are repolarizing, the vector is moving towards the negative electrode or away from the negative. There's a negative vector. There's a negative vector of repolarization moving towards the negative vector. So deflection should be positive or negative? Positive. positive. Because rule was this, the positive charge moved up, moved to the positive electrode, deflection should be positive. If negative vector moved towards the negative electrode, deflection should be again positive. Because similar charges moving towards the similar electrode. Am I clear? So during repolarization, needle will move positively. But repolarization is a moderate speed process. So needle will move fast velocity or gradually? gradually? Gradually. So when repolarization vector is moving because it's a gradual vector and a negative vector moving towards the negative electrode, so needle move positively but gradually. So when needle will move positively but gradually, so during repolarization a wave is produced positive but gradual wave and this wave is called T wave and this T wave represent what is this ventricular repolarization this T wave represents ventricular repolarization right now let's recap all of it P wave represent atrial depolarization this piece this isoelectric line, let me tell you what is isoelectric line. Isoelectric line is a straight line when needle is not fluctuating. 
So this isoelectric line or straight line at the end of the P wave and starting at the end of the P wave and terminating at the beginning of QRS complex is called PR segment. What is this called? PR segment which is starting at the end of the, this segment is starting at the end of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex. Ideally it should be called PQ segment but in some readings Q wave is not seen so they call it PR segment. So this PR segment is representing which activity? AV nodal electrical activity, AV nodal delay. Q wave is showing the onset of ventricular depolarization and it specifically represent ventricular septal depolarization. R wave is representative of major ventricular depolarization. S wave is representative of basal ventricular depolarization. At the end of the QRS and at the beginning of the T wave, this straight line is called ST segment. What is this segment called? ST segment. ST segment is representing that which electrical activity? It represent the time during which all the ventricle is completely depolarized and yet repolarization has not started. Is that right? Then the T wave. T wave represent ventricular repolarization. So what we see? QRS represents spread of ventricular depolarization. ST segment represent when ventricles remain completely depolarized and T wave represent ventricular repolarization. Am I clear? But remember, P wave was showing a real depolarization but there is no wave and no fluctuation there showing the atrial repolarization. Why? Because when atrial repolarizing at that time QRS complex is being formed and atrial depolarization is weak electrical activity but QRS complex which is representative of ventricular depolarization spread QRS complex is a very strong electrical activity so atrial repolarization is masked it is covered and it is unable to move the needle independently. So atrial repolarization is not presented during the ECG tracing. Is that right? So what we have done in all this lecture? Again, listen. We have done number one. During one cardiac cycle, what are the electrical events? Step number two. How those electrical events produce the electrical vectors? And step number three, how different electrical vectors, which are called cardiac vectors, how those cardiac vectors produce ECG pattern. Is that right? Let's have a break.